Hello and welcome to Loud and Visible. This is Jess. And this is Mark. And on today's show, talking everything that in Disability Week, we have Claire Tritton from Mencap and Sarah Gibson from Friends Action North East. Thanks for popping in, girls. Yeah. Nice to be here. Yeah. Yes, thanks for having us. So, this year's theme for Learning Disability Week is friendships and relationships. So, Claire, why do you think friendships and relationships is such a key theme this year? Um, MENCAP have been doing a lot of work this year and one of the things that people have been speaking to us about the most is friendships and relationships. Um, so we've actually prioritised that and it's part of our key strategy now um, and that's why um, the focus is on friendships and relationships for us this year. That's great. Oh well, thanks for that. We'll talk more to Claire and Sarah in a little bit. Hey, Mark, do you like a night out on the tomb with your mates? Well, I pet. And on that note, let's see what Zoe got up to this week. I'm here, one of Newcastle's leading nightclubs, world headquarters, for the biggest northeast learned to the club night, The Fresh. Come on, let's get inside. Why do you come to the fresh? It's good fun. I like mixing with my new friends and that. But it's good and I, I really enjoy it and um, lots of new friends and everybody else that I know and trust. We enjoy it. We like dancing and getting on with people and we get like getting on with the staff and that. I come to fresh because it's fun to see people who's, who's got any difficulties and I'm in a wheelchair it's, and it just, it's just a good atmosphere. Um, you can hear it down there now with all the um, people dancing away, singing away and enjoying a good night. That's, that's it, that's really it, really. Well, why do you think it's important to see your friends? Because they don't judge you how the, the way you are. Like, I'm in a wheelchair, they don't judge, they don't judge us, you get what I mean? Because it's very important to see them and very important that I get to meet them and all that. I mean, I do sit on my own really, but, but I do get up and have a bit of a dance and a bit of a boogie and all that. They say they say by them. Either because they changed they change my life and that, so yeah, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm very confident that I'm enjoying that and that I like mixing with everybody. Be happy, be happy with them and not make, make sure they're all right and not. So Vicky, why is the fresh a good place for people to see their friends? As Fresh is a regular event that happens every month without fail. It's a great opportunity for people to, to meet friends that perhaps they don't get to see outside of, of other activities. I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, like me and you, they might make friends through work or through college, but if those sorts of activities come to an end, if, if you're doing a course and that finishes, you might make some great friendships but it's unlikely you're going to get to see those people again. So with this being a regular monthly event, it's a, it's, it's a chance to sort of catch up with friends and, and make sure you don't lose contact with them. Yeah, so Mum, if you want to come, you have, you have to be there at 7 o'clock on the dock there, and it costs £5 to get in and £1.30 for, for drinks. The, the Fresh Disco um, has been running, I think, for over 18 years now. It's the longest running um, event in the northeast for adults with own disabilities. Um, it happens on the first Tuesday of every month. It's a great opportunity for people to, to meet new friends or to meet up with existing friends and just to have a space to actually have a good laugh, have a dance, have a drink, have a catch up. It happens at World Headquarters, um, which is in Newcastle City Centre. It has fantastic transport links and it's very, very accessible. 
So the staff here are very, very friendly, um, which I think really sort of helps with uh, why you look around the dance floor and everybody's got a smile on their face. Um, and I think it's just a, a brilliant place to, to meet people, to have fun. Um, and the fact it happens in the evening as well means that you, you, know, you actually do get to have a social life outside of the sort of typical nine to five daytime. So, like everybody else, yeah, I intend to enjoy the rest of my life. Cheers. Back to the studio. Well, it looks like Zoe had a good night. Well, hey, I hope she didn't have too many shandies. <laughs> well, if you want to find out more about Fresh, just click on the links below. We use a wear the Fresh before now. Yes, I've heard about it. I've, I've been a couple of times a while ago and it was a really good night. It's good, isn't it? So, Claire, can you tell us a little bit more about Learning Disability Week? Yes, Learning Disability Week's um, been happening for a, a good few years. Um, it started in sort of 1997 and it was a way of highlighting issues and campaigns um, and raising awareness of learning disability. So throughout the, throughout the years, there's been lots of different themes like employment, access to short breaks, hate crime, health. Um, so it covers a lot of topics. And it's an opportunity for everybody in the community to get together, um, whether it's charities, different organisations, local authorities, health and social care professionals, and everybody gets together. And they've got a really strong voice to raise awareness. So how can people get involved? This year, with it being Friendships and Relationships, a lot of the MenCap affiliated groups are doing various events. Um, there's there's drop-in, there's discos. Um, some people are doing Come Dine With Me style events. Um, there's also sort of information days going on. So Sarah, what in particular is Friends Action North East doing for this, this Learning Disability Week? Well, um, as well as having some information stalls at, at some of the events uh, around the region that, that Claire was mentioning there, um, we've got a couple of things that we're launching next week. We're, uh, we're starting up a, a new friendship group in partnership with Sunderland People First, and that is going to be starting up next week, and it's using our tried and tested model of uh, supporting people to um, develop their friendship skills and put those skills into practice yeah. in, a, in a nice uh, friendly and fun way uh, with, with a mind to then kind of moving towards becoming more independent as a group yeah. um, and we're also launching um, a new project um, that links directly to our community access map on our website which yeah. is called the NEAR Awards and that stands for Northeast Accessibility Rating and the whole idea behind that is that it's a chance for people to review and rate venues yeah. that they visit whether yeah. that's cafes, pubs, shops, supermarkets or galleries, anything like that um, and on our map, they can tell people what they uh, found when they went there, what their experience was like, and, yeah. and give it a star rating. So it's not just about, although it's really important to, uh, to think about physical access and things like wheelchair accessibility and things like that, but also the things that people that we work with have told us are really important when they're going out and about with friends and family is things like, were the staff really friendly? Were they helpful? Did they get trapped respectfully? Yeah. Um, was there a quiet spot that they could go to if everything was getting a bit noisy and crowded? Yeah. Um, so it can, it's about those kind of more in-depth um, things that, that you experience when you're going out and about and, and things that can really make a difference to which venue you would choose to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So what do Friends Action North East do to help people make and keep friends? At the heart of our work is our one-to-one -one mentoring project, friendship mentoring project, which basically enables um, people to come to us and work one-to-one -one with a friendship mentor to work towards individual goals that we help them to put together and plan to, towards. Um, and as part of that, they can get training around uh, friendship skills, what is a good friend, how, how the qualities of, of a, a good friend and being a good friend to others. Um, we'll cover other areas sort of how to make a plan B when you're going out and about as well. Um, we've got the, the group activities that I mentioned earlier where people can then put those skills into practice in a, in a real environment with some support. 
Um, and we also um, have some digital training workshops, and that's about helping people to use digital tools to keep in touch with friends and, and, and keep friendships going. So whether that's just, you know, knowing and finding out how to get the most out of your mobile phone, sending texts and putting contact numbers in, or whether it's about getting onto social media and, and keeping safe and knowing the do's and don'ts of social media, um, those kinds of things as well. And, you know, any resource that we create, whether it's a film or um, other types of resources, we, we try um, to keep go, put those on our website so that people have got access to them on the website as well. So a question for both of you. Why do you think it's so important for people with learning disabilities to make and keep friends? I think it's important for us all to have friendships and relationships and um, people with a learning disability is, is no different. You know, we're all the same. It's good for our health and well-being to have friendships, have friendships and make relationships. So it's really, really important. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, that from working with the people that I've worked with um, over the years at Friends Action, people tell us all the time that it's, it's really important in their lives. Um, it's about quality of life and about feeling um, happy and confident and a valued member of society by being active in your own community and getting out and about and doing fun things with friends and you know there's research out there as well that, that backs all of those ideas up that you know it as, as Claire mentioned it's really good for our general health and well-being because you're less likely to become lonely and isolated which can have negative effects on your health yeah. um, and much more likely to um, be um, really involved in a, in a good quality of life. Yeah. So do you think it's harder for people with learning disabilities to make and keep friends? Definitely. I think there's a lot of challenges there. Um, sometimes people haven't got the support to go out to make friends. It's a lack of socialising opportunities. It could be geography, issues with, issues with transport. Money is a key thing that people keep telling us that, you know, without the money, funding cuts, it's really difficult. Yeah. So I think there's lots of different um, issues that people have to overcome. I absolutely agree. And um, as well as those more practical um, barriers that get in the way and kind of make it harder, I think, you know, having friends isn't easy. There's lots of um, things to think about in a relationship like that for it to be equal and fair and you know there's lots of social rules uh, and ambiguous things that you're supposed to say or not say and all of those kinds of things as well can be a real worry for people and you know if you have other um, issues around maybe communication or you're just not um, not used to going out and meeting people and talking to people it can it can yeah. feel really difficult and something that you know that is quite scary I think sometimes. So what would your top tips be for somebody one to one to make and keep friends? from uh, coming to talk to us at Friends Action and of course Claire as well at Mencamp. I think um, there's, there are some um, straightforward things that you can do to start getting out there and getting more involved and meeting people. And a good starting point is thinking about something that you're interested in. If there's something that you like doing, find out are there any groups in your area that are doing those things, whether you like art or sport or walking or you know you like going to the cinema. Quite often your local community centre, library and, and websites online as well can tell you about um, sort of small regular groups that you could tap into. Um, talk to people that support you, people that you trust and tell them that this is something that you want to do more of and where do I start and what can I do um, and, and people will advise you about that as well. Um, and just, um, you know, even think about starting, trying something new, joining in with some taster sessions or something. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that we found and that people have told us is when you're doing an activity, it kind of takes the pressure off a little bit from that face-to-face -face first meeting with somebody because you've, you've got something to talk about and you're doing something. So you maybe feel a little bit more relaxed yeah. and then conversation yeah. comes a lot more naturally as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think um, Sarah, you summed that up quite nicely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Thanks for popping in, girls. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having, having us. Yeah. So if you want to find out more about Friends Action North East and Mencap, just click on the links below. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. But until next time, we play us out, we have the twist.
work out who I am I always knew deep inside The feelings that I tried to hide When I worked it out I felt relieved and I cried When I was feeling strong enough I told my family I want the people to see who I am, the real me. I always knew deep inside I no longer want to hide the love I feel, the love I give. I want to choose how I live. I want to let it out. To scream and shout Whoa!